The Army's moving to electric ground vehicles, but the transition isn't exactly without roadblocks. Covering every mile of the effort is Defense News Ground Combat Reporter Jen Judson. The Army is dipping a toe into the murky waters of fielding electric vehicles, and industry is chomping at the bit to make that happen. But it hasn't been easy for the commercial vehicle world to convince the hesitant service to commit to alternative power for its fleet. In 2019, the Army ramped up efforts to try to come up with a strategy to move its battlefield vehicles away from using classic fuels like JP-8, but has yet to fully realize a strategy. So the Army has continued to invite industry to bring working electric vehicles to demonstrations to show what's possible today and in the future. And the service held a demonstration in May at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, where a large group of vendors brought vehicles that could be used for an electric light reconnaissance vehicle, which could be the Army's first foray in moving to fully electric vehicles. GM Defense brought its infantry squad vehicle that it had converted to a fully electric version in 12 weeks to that demonstration. And then it held an electrification summit at the beginning of June at its Milford Proving Grounds in Michigan where service officials had the chance to drive both the ISV and the electric version for comparison on an off-road course. Defense News drove that same course with the same vehicles on the same day. Should the Army pursue the electric light reconnaissance vehicle, GM Defense plans to submit a design based on the Hummer EV chassis, which is yet to make its public debut. The Hummer EV features a 200 kilowatt hour battery using Ultium technology and is a 1,000 horsepower vehicle. This all translates to about 90 minutes of drive time for 10 minutes of charging. Even as the technology advances in the commercial world, where GM is investing over $27 billion in electric and autonomous vehicles, the Army is still struggling to wrap its head around how to manage an all-electric fleet of vehicles with the logistic burdens on the battlefield that the commercial world simply doesn't face. So what are those obstacles? The operational environment for the Army is a major hurdle when considering electric vehicle performance, and the current vehicle platforms would not easily convert to all-electric. The Army believes converting current combat vehicles like the Abrams tank would be too costly, and technology is not there yet. Batteries that would be needed to power an Abrams tank are presently bigger than the tank. How the Army might refuel or recharge in an austere operational environment is a complicated matter, and the service is grappling with solutions. GM Defense offered some ideas where charging stations might not be possible, such as airdroppable batteries and highly mobile charging stations. Another concern is whether batteries can survive the beating the Army might put them through on the battlefield and the likely exposure to either very hot or very cold environments. So what's next? The Army hasn't totally warmed up to the idea of fully electric vehicles in the short term and believe hybrid might be a better approach. For GM Defense, a hybrid approach would be suboptimal and is an unnecessary bridge given where technology is and where it's going. The Army has invested about $75 million over the last five years on battery and electrification related technology at the Ground Vehicle Systems Center alone and is poised to spend $50 million in fiscal year 2022 on electric and mobility technology development. There is an effort to look at an electric version of the Joint Light Tactical Vehicle and also a hybrid electric Bradley Infantry Fighting Vehicle, but there's still no funding for the electric light reconnaissance vehicle. The Army included the ELRV on a wish list of unfunded requirements that it sent to Congress following the release of the FY22 budget request, but it is unclear whether Congress will plus up the account to make it happen. Thanks, Jen. For more of Jen Judge's coverage, visit defensenews.com. And now, for defense industry headlines. The U.S. Marine Corps has chosen Textron Systems and General Dynamics Land Systems to begin contract negotiations to build advanced reconnaissance vehicle prototypes. That's according to a July 16th Marine Corps announcement. The service will also work with BAE Systems to study the possibility of adapting an amphibious combat vehicle to become an advanced reconnaissance vehicle, or ARV. Army Contracting Command Detroit Arsenal will award ARV other transaction authority contracts which streamline the process for rapid prototyping if negotiations with Textron and G GDLS are successful. GDLS, which is the manufacturer of the Light Armored Vehicle 25 currently in service, said it submitted an ARV prototype proposal by the Corps' May 3 deadline. Textron said at the time of the solicitation deadline that it would compete with a prototype dubbed Cottonmouth that it had already built and drove nearly 750 miles. President Joe Biden recently announced he would nominate Andrew Hunter, a well-known defense industry expert, to serve as the Air Force's next acquisition boss. 
Our own Air Force Times broke the news of Hunter's selection ahead of the White House's July 16th announcement. If confirmed by the Senate, Hunter would become Assistant Air Force Secretary for Acquisition, Technology, and Logistics amid a major push to modernize the service's aircraft and weaponry. Hunter directs the Defense Industrial Initiative Group at the Center for Strategic and International Studies and is a senior fellow in the Think Tank's International Securities Program. A former Pentagon senior executive and Capitol Hill staffer, his work focuses on industrial-based policy, trade, and innovative technology. Long an outside observer of the Air Force procurement system, Hunter would soon oversee its hardware and software portfolio with more than $60 billion. Chief among those programs would be the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter, the B-21 Raider Bomber, the KC-46 Pegasus Tanker, and multiple nuclear weapon initiatives. Pandemic-era budget constraints are expected to complicate efforts to execute a massive upcoming spending plan. You can read Rachel Cohen's extensive coverage on AirForceTimes.com. Satellite imagery company Planet Lab said the National Reconnaissance Office has extended and expanded its contract with the company's subsidiary Planet Federal for commercial satellite imagery. Under the contract, the U.S. intelligence and defense communities will continue to have access to Planet's unclassified daily 3-5 to five meter resolution imagery while also gaining limited access to the company's video capabilities. The NRO first subscribed to Planet's imagery service in 2019, but financial details of the subscription are not public. Planet first began providing imagery to the intelligence community through a multi-year contract awarded by the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency in 2016. The NRO took over that arrangement in 2019 as part of the NGA's effort to transition responsibility for acquiring commercial satellite imagery for the intelligence community to the NRO. The announcement comes as the company prepares to go public this year through a special purpose acquisition company, a transaction it valued at $2.8 billion. Planet operates a fleet of about 200 satellites on orbit, capturing more than 3 million images daily of the Earth's surface. And that's it for this week's defense industry news. Stay with us though, when we return personal finance expert Jeanette Mack will share tips on avoiding identity theft while traveling.